What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be creating a Green Bay Packers inspired graphic with a little bit of a 90s twist, all inside Photoshop. There's gonna be a ton of tips and tricks along the way. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It seriously means so much that you watch these videos. That being said, if you're not already tapped in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would honestly mean so much. I would really appreciate it. It is the beginning of the 2022 NFL season. I'm super hyped. I was born and raised in Wisconsin. I grew up playing football. Naturally, I'm a Packers fan. So we're gonna design a Green Bay Packers inspired graphic in today's tutorial. If you're not a fan of the team, just pretend I'm designing for the Raiders or the Lions or whoever you're into. We've got a lot to cover, so let's just jump into my computer and see what's going on. Okay, so we are inside Photoshop. We're gonna do something a little bit different today with the kind of split screen canvases going on. Um, I thought this might be honestly easier for me to recreate this graphic on the left and I think it might just be nice to sort of see um, this you know pre-made graphic while I'm creating the new one. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this Aaron Rodgers photo. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you know how I find these images. I jump on Google, I filter by larger than two megapixels just so it's, it's only showing like really large photos. I just wanted to find something where, you know, it looked kind of like intimidating. All right, so I'm just gonna hit Command A and that's gonna grab the whole canvas. Command C to copy into our blank canvas. Command V, paste it in. I'm gonna click Show Transform Controls at the top so you can see like the little box around the, the uh, image. And then I'm just gonna size it up with my mouse here to, looks like it's about there. All right. So we've got our main image placed, right? So now, now the next thing I'm gonna do is, I've got this properties box here on the left. If you don't see it, just go to window, properties, and it'll pop right up. And we're gonna use the quick actions remove background. I love using this tool, it's super simple. It works great for, especially like, I don't know, for whatever reason, like athletic, like, like designs, because there's always just like a fuzzy crowd in the background or a field or a court. Um, and you could easily remove the background that way. So I'm gonna zoom in here and make sure there aren't any like, imp not imperfections, but you know, like chunks that um, didn't get taken out by the remove uh, background quick action. So if you use the black swatch um, right here in your swatches panel, and then just go in, I'm just gonna use the, um, the polygonal lasso tool. If you just go in and like kind of cut around um, places that you wanna remove, you can easily do that just like this. And uh, you could also use the brush tool. You could just use a black um, brush and do the same thing. But I just find this to be e like easier for me. And that's, you know, it's what I always suggest. Just whatever is easiest for you, go ahead and do that. If it's using a brush, if it's using the lasso tool, if it's using, a, I don't know, a tablet, whatever. This looks a little rough. I could feather it, but I don't really want there to, I don't want to have like super soft edges. So I'm just going to like manually sort of clean this up. And again, like there's so many ways that you can do these different things in Photoshop. Um, and there's no right way to do it. Like the right way is whatever works best for you. Okay. And I always go a little bit faster in these tutorials just so we're not here forever watching fuller clean up little imperfections. All right. So now make sure this um, thumbnail is selected over here, the little black and white like thumbnail. And then you can just go to edit, fill, and it'll fill the foreground color of black. And it basically, now if we just right, uh, right click deselect, it knocked out all those areas, right? All right, so now I'm gonna add a gradient on the bottom and like right side of the image for two reasons. One, it just, I want a smooth transition from the background into the image. And then two, since he's ultimately gonna be like holding a ball, we can't have like his left arm down because it wouldn't make any sense if he's like holding his arm out. So 
Let's just get these gradients added. Double click on this layer here, gradient overlay. Um, it's gonna be the second option here under basics. I'm, I'm in Photoshop 2022, so the language might be a little bit different, but it's the second option where you see the black going into the, the transparent grid. I'm gonna change the scale to 10, and then I'm just gonna, with my mouse, move it down. So it's just sort of like a soft, let's see, I'm just looking at the other graphic, kind of gauging where it should be. So right about there, okay? And then if we just hit the plus next to gradient overlay, we can add another one, and we're gonna change that to 180, so it comes in on the right side. And then I think if we adjust the scale a little bit, so it's not quite as harsh of a gradient as that it would be at um, a scale of 10%. So maybe like, yeah, something like that. 28% sure. All right, so we've got this image laid out how we want it. The next thing I'm gonna add in is this football. I got this from uh, 123rf.com. RF stands for royalty free. I just wanted like, you know, the classic like holding a football out. I couldn't find any pictures of Aaron doing that. There's obviously different options for like commercial use, personal use, different sizes, all that stuff. This uh, video is not sponsored by 123rf, but I use it all the time, so I definitely recommend it. All right, so we've got our photo here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the rectangular marquee tool just as a quick way to like cut around um, and select this area of the graphic because that's all we really need, right? So then I'm, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy back into our canvas. Command V, we'll paste it in, all right? And it's pretty close to the size that I actually used. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is the good old remove background. So similar to the Aaron Rodgers photo, it was pretty easy to cut out. Um, that's not always the case. So, you know, when you're doing these types of graphics, don't make it too hard on yourself, I guess I would say. But, you know, if, if you have no other option um, other than to use, you know, a, a photo where you need to like manually cut out things or whatever, that's cool. You know, I just, it's mostly honestly for these tutorials that I just like try to make it a little bit easier um, to get through just so I can like show you guys like as much cool stuff as possible. So I'm just going in here and cleaning things up. Like I mentioned before, I'm using a brush. So I'm just using a black brush right now. And then I'll switch to a white brush. If you hit the X key, it'll toggle between um, black and white on the swatches, whatever your foreground and background is. So I'm just going in here and basically seeing if there's um, anything that actually needs to be uh, here that isn't or anything that needs to be removed. Okay, that's cool. For the purpose of this tutorial, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add this Packers G logo onto the ball. So let's just jump into the internet and find the, the logo I used, literally the first search result for uh, Packers logo PNG, so that's great. So all I did here was I used the magic wand tool with anti-alias selected at the top, and I just grabbed the green, and I hit Command C, went back over to my canvas, Command V, and so I just got that because I wanted it to be sort of like a cutout, right? So then, I added a color overlay of black. So it's nice and like clean and crispy, right? Right click, convert to smart object, and then scale it down. And I got it to the point where it was like, yeah, right about here maybe. Tilted it a little bit. Right click, perspective. And then I just sort of scaled it up. There's um, much like everything else in Photoshop, there's tons of ways that you can do perspective. So since this concept is like a little bit cartoony and like over the top, I, I don't feel the need to make the perspective absolutely perfect on the ball. Um, it's pretty damn close and it looks, I think, great in this graphic I created. So we're just gonna go with this. So to make this sort of like indented look on the logo, I added a few effects and I'll show you what I did. So we'll just double click into our logo layer here. 
what I did is I changed the fill opacity um, to, I don't know, I think it was like maybe 40 or 50. Let's just do 50 right now for easy math. And then I, I added an inner shadow. Um, and I basically just messed around until it sort of felt like it, it was like a, just slightly indented. Cause like the more you add, the more distance you add, the, the deeper basically the indent goes. And I just wanted to like look like a slight indent. Like it was like sort of like embossed or is it debossed? I can't remember. Um, so just did that, maybe increased. It's hard for me to remember exactly, you know, what I do with everything, but yeah, maybe that's a little closer. All right. Inner shadow. That. Okay. And then I add a drop shadow where I use white and I changed the blend mode to, I think, soft light. And then again, I just sort of like mess around between distance and size, just so there's like a nice uh, shadow here. We'll change the opacity to 100. Yeah. Use global light. Change the angle to 100 and then, yeah. Again, just sort of like eyeballing it. I could change the opacity a little bit. And then mess with fill opacity again to make sure it's cool. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So yeah, that basically creates sort of like this indented look into the ball. And again, it's sort of like over the top, um, meant to look sort of cartoony. All right, so now we're just gonna tilt the ball and the G logo. Let's actually group these together. So I'm gonna select both of these. I just hold down shift, select layers, command G, throw them in a group. So we've got our ball kind of on its own layer. And then I'm just gonna tilt it. Looks like maybe to about there. All right. And then move it slightly maybe to there. Okay. And I might end up messing around with this. Um, I think it's actually a little bit larger too, but I was gonna say I might mess around with um, the gradient a bit yet, but that's pretty damn good right there. Okay. And maybe over a little bit. I'm really trying to like match this graphic on the left. Okay, cool. All right, that'll 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 definitely work. So I'm gonna bump these over a little bit on the canvas. Okay, so we've got Aaron, we've got him like holding a ball. Um, I think I might, um, I think I might actually remove part of his arm here, right here that it, where it's showing. This was actually, a, I feel like kind of an oversight yesterday where it's bothering me now. Like it didn't bother me yesterday. I don't know if I just like didn't see it or what, but today it is bothering me. So I'm just gonna get rid of that very quickly. Yeah, so now, so now he's holding up the ball. You can't see his left arm. All right. All right, there we go. Yeah, that definitely works better. All right, cool. So. Next thing we're going to do, I think is, why don't we add the fire in there? We'll just take care of the entire like air and image right now. So to do that, I actually used the Fuller Mo uh, bootleg shirt creator pack. I used some fire 04 big flame, drag that into Photoshop, command A, command C, and it's transparent. So we don't have to worry about like removing the background on those. And then I'll just command V, fire over the ball. So just move it up above to the top layer. And might as well just convert to a smart object. Shrink it down, tilted it a little bit, just so it made a little bit more sense with the like positioning of the ball, right? So here's where the sort of like nitpicky designer brain comes in. 
Um, this looks fine, you know, it definitely looks like the football is like on fire, but I don't like the fact that it's like orange and there's gonna be so much like gold in the graphic. So I actually added a gradient map to this flame um, to better match the rest of the design. So to do that, let's just name this flame. Let's actually rename this um, ball tool or add it. Why don't we just rename everything? All right, so to add a gradient map over the flame, we'll just go down to this little half circle at the bottom of our layers panel, gradient map, right click on the gradient map, create clipping mask. So now it's just clipping to that flame. And then we'll click this little like thumbnail here, right? And that, um, again, we're gonna use our properties window. So make sure you have that open and you'll see the little like gradient here, right? Click that and then we're into our gradient editor. Now, I just created my own gradient. So I went from um, a yellow color and I just grabbed it from the helmet um, to white. But I moved I moved this the, um, the stopper of the yellow way over. So to me, this looks a little bit more cohesive with the rest of the graphic. It's very obvious that it's still fire, um, but it just matches the rest of the design better. So I'm gonna decrease the opacity a little bit on this flame, just so you can better see the logo under it. I just want it to be like a subtle detail, but a detail that you can like still make out. All right, so we've got like the main focus of this graphic laid out. Let's get the background in here. So I just searched Lambeau Field. I was looking for a shot, like an aerial shot from above um, at night, just so it worked with our black background. Found this image. Um, this is not a stock photo that you could freely use if you were gonna be selling t-shirts of this design, but since I'm not, and I'm just making a YouTube, a YouTube tutorial, I don't really mind using it. So right click, uh, copy image, back to Photoshop, We'll go into our background and just hit Command V, uh, Control V, of course, if you're on PC and that's gonna paste it in, size it up. All right, so again, I'm just gonna use the rectangular marquee tool, kind of grab what I need from this image, Command J, that's going to throw that little area that I selected to the top. I'm gonna get rid of the layer beneath it. All right, so we've got our background in here and obviously, you know, the graphic on the left is green and yellow. So I'll show you how I did that now. We are going to our good old gradient maps and we'll add a gradient map above the um, background image. Now we don't need to clip it because it's solely working with the background. We, we're not gonna have any more layers underneath it. So you don't need to use a clipping mask in this instance. Uh, but we do need to change the colors of it. So we've got our gradient editor here, the same way we added the gradient map to the flame. We're gonna definitely want black on the far left as our like um, low light, you know? The next stopper, I believe I just used like a nice green color from Aaron's jersey. And then I added, of course, yellow as like the mid-tone and I just grabbed it from his helmet. And then I believe I just moved the green a little bit over, moved the yellow a little bit over. I wanted the white to be somewhat um, subtle as the highlight. Like I didn't want it to be like mostly white, you know, so I moved the yellow over quite a bit. So that looks cool. Um, if you're worried about like the edges being cut off um, sort of harshly, what you can do is double click your background layer and I'll just do an inner glow of 100% um, black with the size also at um, like maxed out at 250. So that way you, you have more of like a soft edge. So we've got our background. Um, we've got the Aaron image, like we're definitely cruising on this graphic. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get um, the Aaron Jones and Jair Alexander uh, photos in here. So I found this picture of Aaron Jones. I was definitely thinking about something that would work on the left side of the canvas and I wanted there to be some movement um, within the graphic. So this is like the perfect photo. Right click, copy image, back to our canvas. And I'm gonna basically select like right above our background layer, right? But above the gradient map because I don't want the gradient, uh, the gradient map to affect this photo. So Command V, 
We're gonna paste in that photo from Google. I'm gonna size it up a bit. Okay. Uh, remove background. All right, so we've got that graphic in here. Again, trying to match as best as I can the graphic on the left. So we're gonna bump this up and make it a little bit bigger. We've got Aaron Jones, we've got Aaron Rodgers. Now let's get Jair Alexander in here. He is a phenomenal player. I'm I'm so hyped for this season. I don't I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I don't want you guys, I don't want this to become me talking about the Packers. Um, so I'm making a point not to like talk about it too much, but I'm I'm hyped. All right, so I just did a quick, you know, copy image. Actually, I don't think I really sized it up at all. Yeah. All right. And make sure 23 was showing. That's good. Remove background. I think, yeah, pretty clean. I mean, really not much I need to do with this other than just position it a little bit. All right, very easy. All right, so we've got our, all of our photos are basically cut out at this point. Um, I'm gonna add the NFL, or I'm sorry, the NFC logo right here real quick. So again, good old Wikipedia. It's a great resource for finding like official logos and they're always like transparent, uh, like transparent backgrounds. So this I just dragged to Photoshop. Command A, copy, Command C, or I'm sorry, Command A, grab the whole canvas, Command C, copy, back to our canvas, Command V to paste it in, drag it over. I'm just gonna convert to a smart object so we can size it down and up as we need to. Okay. And the reason I just, I added this is because I was looking at, um, I was looking at old 90s Packers, uh, t-shirts i was like damn they they always had the nfc like logo the nfc or afc logo like on those old 90s shirts um so i don't know it just felt like nostalgic um there's actually an image that needs to go over this um photo of lambo so let's get that added in as well and that is this photo from pexels Whenever I'm creating graphics where I just need sort of like a wispy, sort of like abstract background, a lot of times I'll use like the sky, like I'll use like Northern Lights. It just sort of adds like this sort of wispy, like cloudy effect. So we're gonna go ahead and download this graphic. Say thanks, thank you Darius Kraus. Appreciate you for this photo. So we've got our downloaded photo here. Command A, Command C back into our canvas, back above this Lambo photo, Lambo, okay, Command V, we'll paste it in, and then I'm gonna change the blend mode over here to screen so that you can still see the photo of Lambo, but I can like mess around with this and sort of get this like wispy effect in here. I'm gonna do the same thing actually that I did here with the inner glow, so just double click this layer, inner glow all the settings are actually already there so that's perfect and then i'm going to adjust the brightness and contrast a little bit because we're seeing like a little bit too much of like the clouds there we go okay and Okay, and then we're gonna size it up a little bit because right now the inner shadow or the inner glow is showing on top of the uh, Lambo image. We don't want that. So we'll just size it up a little bit. All right, so we're good there. And again, that wasn't added so that it would look like clouds or would look like mountains or snow or anything. Um, it's just sort of meant to sort of abstract the Lambo image and just create that sort of like wispy like cool effect. All right, so when I added the clouds to the background, I didn't really love how you could just like see them a ton over here on the left side at the top and then you can't really see them on the right. So I just moved like this entire left side down. I'm gonna adjust the brightness and contrast of this cloud photo a bit more. It's just, there's just like way too much white um, on this right side or I'm sorry, on the left side of the, of the photo. 
Okay, so my camera battery died in the middle of that tutorial and I somehow lost the part where I just typed out the text. So right now things are gonna look a little bit different and then we'll jump back to it in a second. But I basically just, you know, typed out title town, uh, check the show transform controls box at the top, held down shift, sized up this title town text, the kerning I think I had at I think I just had at zero, maybe actually maybe negative 25. And then I just like adjusted this O to I think negative like 150 and sized it, you know, appropriately. I, I picked out this font because I don't know, I love how like grimy and like just like kind of distorted text looked in the 90s and you'd especially see it on like a lot of athletic t-shirts. So I wanted to use something with that vibe, but yeah, that's about it. All right, back to the regular scheduled tutorial. All right, so we've got Title Town written out, scaled down, you know, position similar to how it is on the left, but how do we go from the plain white text to this like rocky texture with the gold um, and the green and all that, right? So, I used a textile pack, but, but, and I need everyone to listen up on this, I used a gradient map on the textile pack. Now, there's only one way, to my knowledge, for this to be done, um, and I'll show you. So, first thing we're gonna do is get the style going. I used the 90s Pro Wrestling Textiles Pack. I used this option right here which was based on like an old Undertaker t-shirt from the 90s, right? Click OK, I left all the default settings the way they were. Um, but obviously this like purple, blue and black is not gonna work with this graphic. Maybe if it was like the Carolina Panthers or something, I don't know, it might work better. Um, but we need it to be green and gold, right? So rather than going in here, and changing all of these individual effects, which you could definitely do if you wanted, I used a gradient map. So what you can't do, what you can't do, is use a gradient map the same way you would on a photo. So if I right click, create clipping mask with my gradient map, it doesn't do anything to this text, right? Um, you know, I can change the colors here. It, it sort of like slightly makes some changes, but it doesn't, really do anything right so the remedy to that is putting this text in a group so i'm going to highlight the text command g control g if you're on uh, pc and that's going to place the text in a group all on its own now we can add the gradient map right click create clipping mask over the group right so now we can see the gradient map is being applied to the text which is what we want right so now, in order to use the same gold and green values in my gradient map um, that I used previously, I'm just gonna go down to this other gradient map that we used on the background, click the little uh, you know, gradient so we can get into the gradient editor here, and then I'm just gonna click new so that we're using the same green and gold that we used for the background, right? I'll click okay go up to my gradient map that's over this text and we'll just rename this title town, get back into our gradient editor, and then we'll just click this, um, this gradient that we just saved and then just mess around a little bit until we've got it similar to how it is on the left, right? With the gold glow, but still plenty of like the green showing in the text. There we go, that should work. Okay, so now we've got text that, you know, way better matches the overall graphic. All right, so lastly, with the composition, we'll get the welcome to text added in. There we go. The font I used is called Stock Quote. I will link to either the font where I downloaded it or to a download of the font, depending on if it's, I don't, I don't know if it's copyright free or not, I can't remember off the top of my head, but either way, there'll be a link in the description to something so you can get this font. Now I'm just stretching it out. I'm just holding down the shift key as I'm stretching the text. 
a bit. I didn't do anything too fancy um, in terms of like the style of the text. It's literally just um, a single stroke, I think. Show all effects. Stroke, stroke to the outside, I believe. Yeah, nothing crazy. Gonna stretch this a little bit more. Bro, if anyone ever tells you not to stretch text, please do not listen to them. Do whatever you want, whatever you think looks like dope. It's so dumb. Someone literally in college, a professor once told me like, you can't stretch type. I'm like, I can do whatever the fuck I want, actually. All right, so we've got our graphic laid out. The next thing I'm gonna show you is this little trick that I've been using lately um, when I've been creating like full color, uh, 90s, 80s inspired graphics, so they have a sort of like printed look to them. Um, this is something I picked up actually from using Duran Studios Depth Tones. Um, he's got a really dope kit that like separates out um, graphics and creates these cool like half tone effects where you can uh, change the color of like the highlights and the mid tones, the low lights, all that. It's super dope. Um, I'm not going to be using that or anything because we're going to keep it full color, but he, he had this one little aspect and I don't want to give away too much because it's like uh, his product. So I don't want to like tell people how he did it, but like there was this one little trick of using a pattern over the entire graphic of what kind of mimics half tones, And then it goes through a series of like separating them and all that. Right. So what I've been doing is I made my own halftone pattern. I didn't use Duran's. Um, I just used the idea because I think it's dope. Um, and so to do that, go down to this little half circle at the bottom of the layers panel and just go to pattern. And I'm going to give this pattern away for free. This is, I just made this um, and I'm going, going to change the scale to 60, click okay, and then change the blend mode over here to overlay. And so that basically creates this sort of like fake half toning process. Um, and I think I might actually change the scale to like 55 instead. Okay, there we go. That looks more like the graphic on the left. Okay. So yeah, that basically just creates this like half tone sort of look throughout the entire graphic. I think it looks super dope. So yeah. That's it, and again, I'll, I'll link to this pattern um, in the description below so anyone can use it. We've got the whole thing laid out. Now, obviously the biggest difference between these two graphics is the one on the left looks like super like bright and like saturated, right? So the way I did that is I basically put everything into a group um, besides the pattern fill at the top. So just hold down shift, grab the bottom layer, grab this top layer, command G, everything's in a group, right? Then I hit command J to duplicate the group, right click, um, merge group. So now we've got this all on its own, right? Then I went up to filter, camera raw filter, and I used a few different effects. So I used futuristic seven, and that basically creates like this super dope, more like saturated, bold look, right? And then I went down to grain, heavy, sharpening, I think medium or heavy, let's see. I think medium, okay? Click okay. All right, so now that we've added this camera raw filter effect, the problem is that we can see all this noise from the grain and stuff in the background. So I just added a levels um, adjustment layer, go down to the half circle, go to levels, and then I just kind of messed around until we got rid of the noise um, in the background and kept it still like super bright. Just like that. So that's really it. I mean, if you want, you can mess around, you know, all day, adding more camera raw filters on top of this, messing around with brightness and contrast levels, all that shit, um, until it's exactly how you want it. Let's get this mocked up on a t-shirt and uh, see how it looks. 
All right, so I'm gonna use this t-shirt from my new Shockwear Streetwear Essentials mock-ups kit. Um, it is not currently out right now, it's coming soon. If you're watching this video in the future, it definitely is out, so I'll make sure it's linked below as soon as it drops. Um, but yeah, let's just get this graphic in here. So I'm just going to go to layer, flatten image, command A, command C, back to our um, mock-up, and then artwork layer, command V. I'm going to change it to the blend mode to screen right away, convert to smart object, zoom out so we can see what we're doing, size it down, woo! Yo, this is a dope shirt. This might be one of my favorite designs I've done on my channel. All right, hell yeah. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you learned some new techniques that'll help you out with your next graphic. Just as a reminder, I do not endorse creating t-shirts using famous athletes, rappers, celebrities, whatever it is, and selling them. If you don't have permission, use these techniques to create your own graphics using copyright free images um, so that you don't have to worry about uh, you know, Johnny Law coming after you. If you're not already subscribed, and especially if you learned something from this video or any other video you've seen from me, please subscribe now, it seriously means so much. Also, be sure to keep up with me on Instagram. Give me a follow over there. I'm always posting like updates when it comes to videos or like new products. I'm posting like graphics I've done for different artists and bands. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about what you saw in this video or you have any suggestions about what you wanna see in the future. If you wanna use some of the graphic tools you saw in this video, those will be linked in the description as well. And if you use the code YT25, you'll get 25% off. That's it for me. If you're an NFL fan, enjoy the season, whatever team you're rooting for, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.